Okay, uh, Susil, now, Kapilavastu is an unknown place today to uh, most scholars. But the Indian government has gone and declared a certain portion of the Indian, uh, Indian territory uh, between the borders of India and Nepal to be Kapilavastu. Now, so, uh, what's happening here now? You see, this photograph shows this uh, Piparava area, which is called Kapilavastu right now, by the Indians and also Ganavaria, as the birthplace, not the birthplace, as the place where Lord Buddha grew up for 29 years uh, of his youth life, of his life. And this is, this place is the Maya Devi temple, that is the, that is Lumbini, that is where he was born. So, According to them, they say that from Piparava, where the palace was, King Suddhodan, that is his father's palace, the uh, Mahamaya Devi, uh, the, the, uh, he, she uh, went along this path here, passing uh, Maya Devi temple to Devada, somewhere to uh, some area here. Can you see that blue line? That is the Rohini River. Mm -hmm. Right, so Siddhartha Nagar and all that, that area. So, when I was in, uh, uh, I had gone there in 2003, 2002, 2005, 2012, 2015, 2017, I had doubts that this is the place where Lord Buddha grew up because it was too small in the sense. That was one thing which I noticed very uh, very effectively at the time because according to what I have learned that the Suddhodana's palace was a huge palace or a huge area which covered with three ponds and three palaces and this was rather too small for me to realize that this was uh, anything to do with Lord Buddha's uh, birthplace or where he grew up. But then Piparava, in 1968, uh, they found uh, uh, Buddha relics by William Pepe, uh, who was a British, at the time of the British uh, rule, uh, government or the, the British rule. So they found this, and uh, this is one of the reasons they were convinced that this has to do with the birthplace of uh, where God Buddha grew up uh, in his youth life. But Actually, I, I, I still did not buy it and I was really uh, antsy about it and I wanted to go ahead and challenge this and, uh, and here if you see 1898, William Pepe, he's the one who, who found it. And in 1972, Sri Vastava, he was the Director General of the uh, Indian Archaeological Survey, who was determined very fraudulently to go ahead and make this uh, place to do with uh, uh, with uh, Keep that. Can with, uh, with uh, related to Lord Buddha. So this is that the stupa where they found the uh, Buddha relics, and that is the casket. Right. So you will have all these photographs when I when you right. Okay. So now. Now, they are, that in 1972, now this is not in 1898, in 1972, Sri Vastava said he also found uh, Buddha relics, uh, and which uh, by that he claimed that, yeah, yeah, based on the size of the burnt, you know, but it was declined by the scholars. So, this is one of my diagrams which shows this is the finding of 1898. And below that, here is where Sri Vastava said that he found it. So I proved it that this is wrong because you cannot find anything uh, uh, of recent time uh, below one which is of 1898. Okay? 
So I will this thing. So I will show you all that details on that. And here is Ganavarya. So when he the the uh, scholar when he uh, Sri Vastava uh, was refused to be accepted by the scholars that Piparava is not the place where Lord Buddha has anything to do with. He moved to a place called Ganavarya in 1973, in one year after that. And he started excavating this area and then he found this place, which is only 72 feet by 72 feet. And he claimed that again, this is going. This is the palace of Lord Buddha or Suddhodana, where Lord Buddha grew up. So the Indian government accepted it. In 1976, they made all this area to say Kapilavastu. Which is, which is, which has had nothing to do with, in my opinion at that time, was nothing to do with uh, Lord Buddha. So, what I did was, now these are the things uh, he gave as evidence to, uh, in order to claim Kapilavastu, uh, Ganavari as Kapilavastu. That he said he found some seals which are seals like the you know the, the uh, sealing some uh, lids right with the name kapilavastu being inscribed onto those seals now this is ganavarya and now that's me taking doing the research there and taking you know and uh, this is uh, he claimed that this is the east entrance of the palace now this doesn't, for me, doesn't look like a palace to any way. So these things, I have still not gone to the place where I found to be the palace. This is, I'm looking at Ganavarya. This is the place your friend said that I have not seen this. Okay. Now these are my photographs, you know, every, every, everything, all, whatever I show is 100% mine. And uh, I have copyrighted uh, all some of these photographs. So this is Ganavarya and these are the remains of Ganavarya and uh, there are some other structures in the same compound and uh, so this is also Ganavarya this is also and that's the well there inside the building itself and that's Ganavarya and this is uh, also within the uh, compound, the Ganavarya. Now, see, there are thousands and thousands of uh, uh, pilgrims visit the, this place which in Ganavarya and Piparava, believing that this is the place where Lord Buddha spent 29 years of his life. This Buddhist monk is from Nepal. Actually, it's uh, Prince Siddhartha. He was not Buddha yet. No, not yeah, but Buddha. When I say Buddha's meaning, meaning you, you, in his youth life, right. right. I also say if he has spent twenty nine years of where Buddha spent twenty nine years of his youth life or his younger life, that is correct. But not Buddha spent Buddha's youth life, which is oh, uh, Prince Siddhartha. Oh, Prince Siddhartha, yeah. Okay, so all these people they come there. These are the pilgrimages from Sri Lanka. Come, this is uh, a time when I was there. I took a few photographs with all this crowd here. And this, uh, you know, this is a small temple uh, by a Sri Lankan monk called Mahindraviyara in, uh, in Piparava and Ganavarya. Piparava and Ganavarya is within a small uh, uh, proximity, uh, about a kilometer away. So uh, you can walk from uh, Piparava to uh, Ganavarya within 10 minutes or 15 minutes. So, you know, this area has been called Kapilavasu and it has been converted with all structures with the name Buddha Chauk. And this is the one of the guys who came with me. He's an he's a Indian scholar. This was in 2015. And you can see this this one says Kapilavastu, the board, and that's the direction to Kapilavastu. And this, all these buses are going to Kapilavastu. And uh, she... Buddha talk, Kapilavastu 1977, and all this kind of thing, you know, all this area, they have everything Kapilavastu. So this is the, and it is so, in a very dilapidated, denigrated, there is not, no such thing. This is the entrance 
to that area with the Buddha talk, uh, with the Buddha statue and all that. And there is a uh, uh, what do you call a, a, an arch made out of a, you know a temporary arch like thing. And all these places, which actually you know Kapila was to eight point five kilometers. And this is all in the Indian side. You have to understand. These are all in the Indian side. And uh, that, this is the, that uh, that uh, Mahinda Rame in uh, Kriparava. Now these are the pilgrims who come there. So with this, uh, I had a bit of a heated argument with the uh, the curator at uh, Ganavaria at Piparava when I went and saw them. I don't think this place is Kapilavastu and he said, well, don't uh, rock the boat and uh, why do you say things that way and all that. I said, this is has no uh, uh, parallel descriptions with the text, Buddhist text. This is too small to be a place uh, what I have studied and according to my understanding. And uh, this has no place. I, I never talked about Rohini or Banganga or anything at the time. I just only concentrated on the structures which I saw in Piparava and Ganavaria. Okay. So now I even told them that Sir General Cunningham said monuments themselves cannot enable us to indicate the real site unless the ancient textual description for the monuments speak through their inscriptions and location. Okay. That was my algorithm for my research. That means if you if there are if you find anything on the ground, when you say on the ground like uh, uh, artifacts or archaeological ruins, it has to match with something which has been already stated in the in the in the in the text. I'm not talking about Buddhist text, any text, Western, Eastern, or any place, or written by Shakespeare or anybody. Or it has to have inscriptions which says what it is. Otherwise, there is no way that you can tell exactly match with. Otherwise, it will be a your hypothesis only. Even if you do a DNA test or a carbon dating test, that means you have no real proof what it is. So that is what he says there. So say for example, if you find something. Uh, in any location and you go ahead and do a carbon dating and you'll say yeah it belongs to uh, 35 BC fine so what it is what is it if that's all you can say that it is it belongs to that but you cannot say whether it belongs to that person or this person or that animal or you know any, anything of that kind of thing you can only guess so that is what he says and that is a very important statement and this statement is found in the archaeological survey in written in 1878 by Sir General Cunningham. So on that premise, I also started reading while I was there about the Chinese pilgrim Fa Hin and Suen Sang, who actually gave the description how uh, Kapilavastu and how far away Kapilavastu was from the Lumbini and other uh, important sites. So, this is one of them, which is actually belong to uh, Kakusanda Buddha. King Asoka did a pillar, in, erected a pillar, where Kakusanda, pillar, uh, Kakusanda Buddha was born. And Fahian measured the distance from this pillar to the palace of King Suddhodana or Prince Siddhartha or the where Lord Buddha uh, lived in his youth, the palace. So this distance was marked as 4.6 miles, which is actually, it was not written in miles, it was written in Le, L-E, Le, in Chinese distance measurements, from that point to the place of Kapilavastu. Now, Piparava and Ganavarya does not come close to it. You understand? So, and then this is Konagama, Buddha's uh, Asoka pillar. 
right? Now this one is it, a very recent photograph. When I <coughs> took the photograph in the initially 2015, it was not had <coughs> any kind of uh, uh, any kind of uh, tiles or tile work and all kinds of structures. It was all in the open. So there is a measurement of this also, which I think it was 4.7 kilometers. Okay, I can't remember the exact date. I didn't study before I came here. So this is the inscriptions which was written by later people saying that this is the place of the birthplace of Konaga. Right now, that is the same uh, same pillar which is on the ground right now, uh, which has been preserved. Right, and <clears throat> you find this inscription there. Right, <clears throat> excuse me. So now, with that information, I went to I went to Lumbini. I went to Lumbini, and where I met a, a Buddhist by monk by the name of Nanda, but they come Nanda, and I was discussing this with him. He said, "Mahatya, you know, I have." seen some uh, ruins, uh, archaeological ruins, about 41 kilometers from here. Would you, would you like to go ahead and look at it and see to yourself whether what you think about it? So, the following day we hired a, a van, got into the van and we took enough water and some food items and all that, and uh, pillows and some uh, clothes and all that in order to be he said, you cannot go there and look at it in because it's in the forested area and you have to spend at least two, three days. So we actually planned for five days, myself, the driver and the Buddhist monk. So we went there and uh, uh, we came to a place called Tiller Coast. And as soon as I stepped in, something told me, it's like somebody talking to me, son, this is the place I was born. This is the place I lived. This is the place I grew up. This is the place of my father. Something like that. I know not this one wrong with you. This came to my whole body. And I started looking into it. And I remember the Sukumara Sutra. What Buddha described that his father, that is what I just told you. His father, the king said, decided to keep him within the three, the walls of the palace built three palaces named Ramya, Suramya, Subha. One for the rainy season, one for the winter season, one for the uh, uh, summer season. Three distinct seasons. And I saw the elevated footings, which I did not see in Piparava, nor in Ganavarya. Now these are the footings, right in the jungle area. The very, this is the, that priest which who took me down there. So I was taking the photographs. Very wide footing. This is a fort because this goes 1,350 feet to one side and another side 1,370 feet. Now that is a large area compared to 72 feet by 72 feet palace where uh, Sri Vastava said that it is the palace of King uh, Siddhartha. Now I'm going to show you the things I took the photographs of. Now these are the remnants of the footings. It's all in the forest area. Now are they <coughs> are these preserved by the uh, Nepali government no, as no, 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 archaeological no, no, facts? No. So what do they believe these to be? Nepalese have no interest in Buddhist uh, archaeology. Indians have interest in Buddhist archaeology only to make the money. Nepali has, now it is coming, now they are coming to this side because of my shouting and my pressure. Not, you see, if the grass is grown all over the place, there are wild animals in there, snakes, no snakes I think, but you can see some lizards and all kind of things. Everywhere it is, you, this is at least the places where I could walk. I, I went through brushes with the camera, uh, uh, with uh, my body being torn up with the thorns. But then, Nepalese has no interest. That is why I'm actually 
That is why I am actually bringing the Nepalis to realize that this is very important. This is very important for their own heritage. can see that it's all neglected. The so you said there. that there was some kind of, uh, see that, that uh, footing, that rock right yeah. there, yeah. this one seemed to have some kind of, uh, some kind of carving in it. No, it's Maybe actually, in, in yeah. Productions? No, no, not no inscription. Th those are actually what happened is, see, there would have been poles mm -hmm. uh, in the structure. A bow would have been, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, out of wood. It is not out of built right, right, you know. Are these, uh, you know, rocks from the quarries? Not rock. It is Granite? brick, bl Bricks. burnt brick. Okay. Burnt slab, brick slabs. And there are two stupas within the forested area, which has been there. Then that is, you, I, I did the research and I even went on to, to get the satellite photographs. So the satellite photographs, you will see the two stupas, satellite view of the two stupas, maybe in ruins covered in the jungle. Here are the two stupas. Mm -hmm. so the, the ruins are here. <coughs> the ruins cannot be seen because it is hidden in the uh, bushes. So you are the first person who wrote to UNESCO about this? I, I'm not saying the, uh, the people know about it. Uh -huh. The British scholars know about it. When it comes to saying that this is the place where Lord Buddha was born and I have the textual evidence for it, I'm the first person. And then, uh, so UNESCO, after you uh, later did some investigations, they have already seen some people, yes. And then they say that uh, no, they, there's they no have conclusive evidence. No conclusive evidence. They said, mm -hmm. but now I'm I'm saying, it because the pressure from India. Mm -hmm. My father built three ponds and one blue blue lotuses and one white lotuses and one red lotus of Sukumara Sutra. But that is why. <clears throat> because they have not seen this. Mm -hmm. Letter doesn't show all the details. Right. Like for example, I send them the photographs. So I am now, the Nepalis are going to support me, the government. Now we, we had a, the council general coming, now the president, the uh, Nepali TV people, and all these people are behind me now because they realize the gravity of this. They realize the value of what I'm doing. So they are going to give me the fullest support. They, I'm pretty sure they are going to do some financial support. But I said, not to me. Whatever you all want to do, go ahead and do that. And I don't want to touch any kind of money from any of this uh, money that I will deny out of this or somebody offers. It has been already done about eight people. I said, no, thank you. And... Uh, so, we are going to hit hard on UNESCO that this is the place, there is no question about it. I'm going to show you, you have not seen yet, you have not seen one tenth of it yet. So, right now itself, people realize up to this point that I have a very good evidence to show that this is the place where uh, Siddhartha or Lord Buddha went in the small age, young age grew up. Okay. Because the Sukumala Sutra says, in his Sukumala, that Lord Buddha himself says that I had, my father built three ponds, three palaces, which I just showed you the foundations. So the ponds are not ponds anymore, but you can see within the fortification walls, there are three distinguished, distinguishable areas which are Marshy land, you can see that. Mm -hmm. See, after 2600 years, that is one. Right. That's another one. Mm -hmm. You can see the fortification wall is here. You can see that. 
Right. The fourth, and the fortification wall goes that way. See, you can see that along there. And you will see the fortification wall. I'm standing on this side, on this side here, on, this, on the west side. Okay? I'll show you that. See the fortification wall? Yes. That's the thing. And I'm taking the photograph that way now. Fortification wall, full thing. See? So this is within, not outside. Now you have a boundary here. Mm -hmm. If there are three ponds here, there's a wall around here. There's a palace and the foot, foot, fortification, the, the, within the fortification are three palaces and three ponds. So now, where is the parallel which I'm drawing from the Buddhist text is exactly what, is, what I'm finding on the ground. You can see the lily pond south side, okay? And these are the same photographs. This is one of the most convincing evidences. I asked some of the Indian scholars, where are the ponds? We don't have any ponds there. They did not have any. Because they don't know the Buddhist scripts. They have not read the Buddhist scripts. They have no idea. Just because Srivastava goes and finds something and says, this is Kapilavastu, the palace. Right? And that is what they said. This is the ponds. You have not yet finished, my friend. You are, this is the second most, the third most strong evidence. Or not the third. The first was the Gotyava, Nigliava, the three palaces, and the three ponds, the fourth evidence. Okay. See, now this is you know, interior wall footing. You cannot have ponds within, within a structure like this. Now I took photographs from the satellite and I measured the extent of the extent of the um, archaeological ruins or the remains of the monuments that that much but you cannot see it you know but I saw the uh, you know the uh, what they call what of the photographs this uh, satellite photographs these are from uh, from uh, what do you call it uh, maps okay yeah So ancient text Buddha Charita and Buddha Vamsa described Prince Prisata left from the eastern gate of the palace. Now you, I showed you what is found in Ganavaria and Piparava. Now you look at the palace eastern gate, how it looks like. It looks like this. These are the steps. These are the steps. These are the walls. These are the walls. These are the walls. Walls and the footing and fortification walls. See how neglected they are. Now in the Buddhist text also it says that when Lord Buddha went or uh, when he uh, renounced his uh, princelyhood and walked out from the eastern gate, one of the walls uh, leaned towards him. And I don't know whether I can relate that to it, but among all the other things, so you'll find this kind of uh, failure of the footings and the walls. And also, the Chinese uh, pilgrims, Fa Yin and Xuan Sang, describes in their travel logs that they, are, they see three elevated footings, remains of, remains, uh, not footings, structures, half built. Now, normally, the uh, fortification walls are at the ground level. And then a little bit above, you'll find the footings coming at about two or three feet above. And then you'll find elevated 
areas, which actually could have been the palace, three palaces, you know, described by the Chinese pilgrims, right here. Okay. You see, it is it is not the, these are not footings. This is something structural, structural, right? And that's my camera here while I'm taking you know shots. See, these are high high elevated areas. You can see that. And see the ground, you know, all neglected. See, high, high elevated. Right, steps going up. High elevated. Highly elevated. Now, this is also maps. And this is the area Chilrakut. All this area is now neglected and very poor people live. Now, my friends, you have seen what I have seen in my own eyes, which I did spend five days there. Now, in order for me to go ahead and relate to what I have studied, my knowledge, for you to dispense my knowledge, in order to, to relate to this uh, archaeological ruins, I should go ahead and look at some of the textual evidence. Now, according to the according to the Kuddhapi Nikaya, the Buddha Charita, and also in the Ashwagosha, three books says that the Kapilavastu, the princess, uh, 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 King Suddhodana's palace, was located at the shores, at the banks of the Banganga. My dear friends, there is no river in Piparawa. There is no river in Ganga, uh, in uh, Ganwaria. So, how could they say either the Buddhist texts are wrong or these people who are writing is, is writing something which is erroneous? And also, what is being seen is not the palace. So you can see, if I see in the landscape of these archaeological ruins which I saw, whether there is a Bengaga, yes, there is a river. Right in the western side of this western side of this uh, archaeological ruins. This is Bengal. Now the ruins are somewhere here. The, where the, you know, which is called Tilrakut. And see Piparava, right here. Mm -hmm. Where is Bengal? Where can you show Bengal to me? I mean, Bengal is there, but far distance. Far from, distance, from... but it's not in the banks. Yeah. This is about 40 kilometers. Right. This is right there. And here the uh, Nigli Nigliava, Nigliava is somewhere here, that uh, Konagama, the distance measured. And uh, Gotiava is somewhere here, Kudan, yes. Nigli or Higli? Huh? Nigli. Higli, yeah, this is Higli. But, but I, I, Nigliava, I have not measured here, I have not me uh, uh, named it. Okay? Because these places are from the maps, so I don't get uh, all the, the all these texts, so I had to put it in, in there. So, you know, this is my writing, but these are from the maps, you know. Sagarawa, mm -hmm. Bikuli, uh, Higlia, Sugar, Sagar, you know, all that, you know. And that is where Lumbini is, this is where Piparava is, and Ganavari is right there, you see. So no, no river, right? Now I'll come to Rohini River also. This is one of the greatest evidences. This is how the Bengal looks like. And right in here, if you go, if somebody walks through here, about, about maybe 100 feet, 200 feet, you'll come to the first ruins. 100% my friends, I have given this talk about eight times in India, in Nepal, 
in United States. Everybody who had listened to me, 100% agreement. I debated with a, a Buddhist monk who did a PhD at Koparawa. After the debate, after two days, he said, I think you are right, though I done the PhD. Okay. So I'm not trying to convince you those. These are my facts. Now you can see Bengal, another uh, satellite. You know, here are the ruins. Where is Piparama? Where is Kapilavastu? Nowhere close to it. Location of the Kapilavastu Palace according to the Buddhist text, Buddha Charitra. Sumangala Vilasini, Sutta Nipata was at the Bengaga. Banks of the Bengaga River. Can you see? Mm -hmm. Either the Buddhist texts are wrong or I am wrong. The Theragatha verse. 527-533 Kaludai was a friend of Lord Buddha, childhood friend. So his father, King Suddhodana, after he became, was enlightened, became Buddha, sent him to ask him to come and visit him. He would like to see him. He's, he said in a in a in a in a sloka, the slokas are 527 to 533, which is found in Tiragata. Then he described the way. The, the, the from uh, Sravasti, from uh, uh, from uh, uh, where Buddha was residing, the 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 path, the road that he has to follow to come to to uh, Kapilavastu. So he says in that uh, sloka or in that uh, in the poet in a poetic form to my Lord. Your, your clan, your Shakyas and the Kolyas are waiting to see you. They have heard that you got, you have been enlightened. And the path is, the time to go there is uh, the right time now. And uh, there is blossoms blooming on the boughs. And then uh, the path is clear and the river Rohini is, uh, uh, is flowing uh, uh, gigantically and uh, you can cross it and go to the Shakya to the Shakya uh, the Shakya town of Kapilavastu Shakya city or the Shakya not the town Shakya kingdom of Kapilavastu so my lord let the Shakya and Kolya see you facing westward and crossing the river Romini with beautiful words and this was written not yesterday not today not hundred years ago thousands and thousands of years ago and where is Rohini, my friend? Not in Piprava, not in Kapilavastu. Either this man is lying or what I am seeing is not Kap Rohini. <laughs> River Rohini. That's me, my friend. I am in the banks of the River Rohini. And the River Rohini is here. And now it's dry. So that is River Rohini. So this is the Shakya kingdom and on to the, the east side is the uh, Skolia kingdom. Now these are such like for, I always, because people will say, okay, we want something relative. Here are the satellite photographs showing it. Here is, here is the twin stupa. Here is the Benganga and the Rohini river is somewhere on this side here. Enough presentation. But that is all I have the time for you. I have over 2,000 to 5,000 photographs of this area. But for my friend Sushil Vijay Singh's uh, benefit, I'm going to show a little bit more further. Going back, I think. No, no. The same down about here. Now, <clears throat> what I'm going to tell you is very controversial because I'm having. Uh, Friction mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, with the Indian people because of this, because I am trying to take away their money or the way of actually earning money by falsification that Kapilavastu is in uh, Piparava and Ganavaria. And I have the evidence, very strong evidence, and they had no way of uh, uh, defeating my purpose. They have no way of uh, saying that I don't have the evidence. So this guy, what's his name, uh, Srivastava, in one of his articles, he wrote that when he could not say that Lord Buddha had a huge palace, he diminished Lord Buddha's father to be a landlord. He said, he was no king but a landlord or a chieftain of the clan. Buddhist scripture has exaggerated that Lord Buddha was a son of a king. Suddhodana was made a great king in the later Buddha text. Greatly influenced by the religious sentiments of the devotees. So I even told this to the director general of UNESCO, Aoli. Uh, in France, in Paris, when I talked to her. So, what I want to tell you is that when people cannot win by evidence, they try to denigrate, they try to use language to put down the other person. That is what kept Srivastava saying. And I challenge him, though he is the director of archaeology, to, um, I'm a small person compared to him, to come and debate with me. And I told him that you will lose. I had not spoken to him personally, but I made him known through other means, letters and all kinds of things. Come and debate with me, you will lose. And I am not going to close my eyes until the day I see that Kapilavastu is, Tikarapur uh, is renamed as Kapilavastu. So this is one of them, one of the other evidence. And this is what he lied. He said that he found Lord Buddha's relics uh, uh, in uh, Piparava. My friends, Lord Buddha has three types of relics, according to Tupavansa. One's the size of mustard seed, the other the, the size of uh, uh, bean size, the size of beans. The other, the size, the three, the two, the two, and one the neck bone and the other one is the hair. So those are the three sizes which you will see. You will not see bones like what you see is shown there. This is completely falsified. Mega sized bones, not relics of Buddha. And the, the people were fooled in this was depicted in New Delhi in 2002. And when I told that, some people thought that I'm disrespecting to the to Lord Buddha. I said, this is not Buddha's relics. That's it. And everybody, you know, looked at me amazingly. And, you know, not amazingly, in bewilderment. Amazingly. Yeah. And they were, they were not happy about what I said. Yes, this is, a, this is the palace he's talking about. 70 feet by 70 feet. No one, nothing. Ganabaria. Ramya Palace, that is what. This is, you know, according to his. You know. And uh, this is, this is the, this is the telephone. Uh, reels and that is the ring over here. Mm -hmm. Now this is the village. In that, the, this is about two kilometers from the forested area. Very poor village. There is this place where, according to the historical records, that uh, the Shakyans were slain by Dasatu's son. And you can see far distant there are wild buffaloes and all that around here. 
No, we I slept in a at a tree. I'll show you. I slept. So these are the people. Very beautiful. You don't see them as Indians. They don't look like Indians. I'll show you the differences. Can you see? The prettiness, though poor, they are poor, but you know. Can you see? I slept in the, in the, in this tree here. I put on hay, covered with this thing. And the Hanzaro slept in the van. Can you see the beauty? You understand what I'm saying, right? Mm -hmm. Look at the Indians otherwise, how they look like compared to the... This is the Indians around that area. These are Nepal is in the Tarai area. These photographs were taken in 1984 when I went to Dalek. Yeah, I say direct, yes. See how they are. Compared to the Indians. Can you see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Can you see the difference? Yes. So they are somewhat like Asian mix. This? Meaning like a... No, this is a Buddha, Shakyaman. This is a, they are remnants of Shakyaman. Shakyas. These are the letters which were written by Pepe, uh, William Pepe to Cunningham. Copies of this. Now you don't have to go through all these things. These are very tech, uh, this is highly educational. Mm -hmm. I mean intellectual. Mm -hmm. Because nobody has this. Because for me to, somebody want to write right. with me, mm -hmm. these are letters. Don't get it. These are in their own handwriting. Mm. Right? This is the handwriting of Pepe. Mm -hmm. This is handwriting of Pepe. This is what he saw on those places, saying that those relics are belong to Lord Buddha. That is correct. These are the verses he found. One, mm -hmm. two, three, four, five. So this is the verse that the relics was. This is the verse he found. Thank you, Dr. Sonia. It's a wonderful uh, presentation and a lot of information. Yeah. And you make a lot, lot of sense. So, you know, <clears throat> you took not only information from Buddhist scriptures, but the location uh, related to the surrounding, the river banks, people, the way they look, and all this uh, Ramya Suramya Subha, Taking all the pieces of the puzzle, you are putting it in the right place, which is proof that this makes much more sense than what it is uh, believed to be the place of the uh, birthplace of the uh, Prince Siddhartha. Yeah. Without, without any argument, otherwise people won't support me. Yeah. Now the people are supporting me. So and they want me to take the lead. Mm. And I, I don't want to be the lead, I, I will take the lead, but I, my intention is not to be the leader of this. But I like to be the one who wanted to be remembered in my legend that I was able to get this place renamed to be Kapilavastu. And I know that I will. I think you will. Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> I think.